Hi everybody, welcome to the next video in my updated for 2024 beginner's guide to modding community PC servers. Now in this one we're going to be talking about how you can change the time and how fast the time passes on your community server. Really important, the date and we're also going to talk about um, how you can change the map so you can go from like Chernus to Livonia because actually it's, it's pretty easy we're not going to cover custom maps but just the um, the vanilla ones before we start though I just want to remind everybody in the description below this video you'll find a link to this playlist which hopefully will have a few more videos in it by the time you can look at it so these are all of the videos in this updated for 2024 PC community server beginners guides um, so you can choose, you know, if you already know what you're doing and you want to pick out certain things, you can pick them out for them from there. Also, you'll see a next video link and a previous video link if you're working through them in a logical order. Hopefully I've recorded them in a logical order. And also you'll see a link to my console version of these videos if you're coming at it from a console uh, point of view, which is, which is actually it's quite different for this video. Um, and obviously you'll see the, the, uh, the um, comment section where you can add questions and things like that so here we go so what we're going to look at now now is how to change the time and the, the speed at which time passes so in previous videos we've talked about getting your nitrado server and what you'll want to do is you want to go into the dashboard for your server and you'll want to go into the settings we've talked about how you would have expert mode turned on tick and you would have saved that and now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the expert settings which I've already clicked to here, and we need to stop the server before we change anything. There we go. Now, while that's doing that, in the description below this video, you'll also see a link to daisyboosters.com forward slash tools forward slash calculator. And this is a very handy tool we're going to use to put in the setting which tells us how long, or tells the server, how long a day should last and how long a night should last on our server. So by all means, go to the description, click on that, have that open, ready, maybe have a have a play around with it. Okay, so our server is now stopped. So this is the ser serverdz.config file. So if you're working with someone apart from Nitrido, maybe where you've got, got um, um, direct access to the serverdz.config file, it will look something like this. Sometimes some of these things are in a different order. So let's scroll down. And these are kind of the, the time settings we're interested in. And what we have here is on the left hand side, um, sort of that, and then that, and then that, and then that. These are the config settings, if you like, that, that control the way that time passes. And on the right-hand side, these are remarks put in by the developers to very helpfully tell us what these things mean. So the first one is, is server time equals, and then we have an entry that says system time. So this entry here, it can either be system time or it can be um, a specific year and date in this format here so full year um, month day hour hour minute minute okay and what this sets is when your server does a restart and we're going to be having restarts in a, in a video pretty soon what time does it start at um, if we use system time it means that whatever the time of the local server that this is running on so let's say we've set up our Nitrado server or other server to be on a uh, rack in a data center in Germany so whatever time it is in in Berlin in Germany when the server does a restart it will start at that time so if before the restart it was four o'clock in the afternoon but actually it's nine o'clock in the morning in Germany when it does a restart it will go to system time um, so you can you can have that as that or you could do it so that actually every time the, the, the uh, server starts I want it to start at a particular time this can be very useful if you want a server where you want it to be daytime all of the time or nighttime all of the time um, so let me give you an example so let's say we wanted our server to be daytime all of the time what you could do is you could copy this here so that gives us the correct format and we could paste that over there so control V to paste and we could say okay why don't you start in June so 6th June on June the 1st I think it was it like that was it 
yeah, month, month, day, day, hour, hour, and start at 0900 in the morning. So every time the server restarted, it would be nine o'clock in the morning. Um, and then it would it would work through. So that would be pretty cool. Now this must be uh, used in conjunction with server time persistent equals zero. So server time persistent, what this means is should the server save the time that it's currently running at when it turns off and it does a restart or should it not? So if we want always want the server to rest when it restarts go to you know nine o'clock in the morning on the first of June 2015 we would set that as um, zero as it is now and every restart it would it would do that um, I would probably suggest doing something like this I would have my time as server time persistent equals one like that this way when you when players run your server and they're playing along and it say it's it's night time in the server the server restarts and it's still night time and the time will pass as you change the settings um, or if it's daytime, say you're playing in the evening, um, say you're playing at 10 o'clock at night in the evening and it's daytime on the server, if the server time was set to system time, the server would do a restart and if the server was in the same country you were, it would then be nighttime. So it would be a bit um, immersion breaking, wouldn't it, if for that to sort of happen. So I always have server time persistent equals one. Um, and then server time, you know, you could have it as system time. It doesn't really matter because once it's started, because server time is persistent, it will keep remembering the time until you get until you do a reinstall and you, you wipe everything. Now, um, what you could do actually as well is when we were talking about um, having a server that would stay as daytime all of the time. What you could have is you have server time persistent equals zero. And then when we come to do the restarts, we're, we're going to do a restart where your server is going to restart every, I think it's every six hours is the one I tend to go with. So what that means is, if your server start time is nine o'clock in the morning, and the server only runs for six hours before it does a restart, and every time it restarts, it goes back to nine o'clock in the morning, it will always be nine o'clock, it will always be daytime in your server. As long as we set the server time acceleration to something like one and I'm going to explain that in a minute um, and so you could have that so it would always be daytime so pe players wouldn't have to experience night um, nighttime playing daisy is a lot of fun but it can be very frustrating if you can only play daisy for you know for a short amount of time because say you work or you've got kids or something like that and you, you just want you need the daylight to be able to see what you're doing you know you appreciate nighttime yeah it's great it's fantastic but I really want to do something during the day and and this is how you can have that sort of easier experience Right, so let's move on to server time acceleration now and server time, uh, server night time acceleration. Two incredibly important settings. So these are multipli multiplication factors that will apply to the rate or the speed at which time passes on your server. For example, if we have server time acceleration equals one, one hour in the real world, in our world, is the same as one hour on your server. So for, for every hour it is in the real world, it would be an hour in your server. If we set this to two, it would be twice as fast. So if it was an hour in the real world when you're sitting in front of your PC, that would actually be two hours. So what that would mean is that if we say that for every 24 hour day, 12 hours a day and 12 hours a night, now I know that isn't strictly true depending on where you are in the world, but if, if, if it was, what it would mean is if we had server time acceleration equals two, that would mean that day times, instead of being 12 hours long, would be six hours long. Or you could, you know, you could go even further. You could say four, um, and days would now be three hours long, <laughs> and and so on and so forth. Same with the server time, nighttime acceleration. So what we would normally do is often, when you've got a new server, you want nights to be fairly short. Maybe you still want them, but you want them to be fairly short. So you maybe set them as ten times faster. So that would mean, you know, you're, you're I'm going to get this wrong now. So let's say nights were 10 hours long <laughs> in the real world. On your server, they would only last one hour. Now, as you can tell, the maths behind this can be a little bit complicated. If, like me, you've only got basic maths. But that's where Daisy Boosters comes in. Because this handy little website means that we can put in how long in hours we want our day to be. And it will tell us. So let's say we want an eight-hour day. 
and it's, it's, it says the day multiplier should be one um yeah that's because the reason for that is because day z is set above the equator okay so days aren't strictly um one and one uh, in fact is it let me just double check that yeah okay and let's say now with the night though we put the entry in minutes so let's say we wanted a one hour night so we want it to be 60 minutes hit calculate it so now we can see if we want an eight hour day and a one hour night we would put in the day multiplier as one and the night multiplier let's say actually i actually only want a 15 minute night we could do it like that so we want a day multiplier of one that will give us eight hours of day and a night multiplier of 32. so we can now go back to our server and go okay so server daytime acceleration is one and nighttime acceleration is 32. how easy is that and now we've got 15 minute nights easy peasy lovely jubbly nice and easy to do and that's how you you change the speed at which time travels and the speed at which time travels is very very important i think in your own community server mainly because of whether you want to play at night or not um, if you wanted it to be night all the time you would set your server time to be at night so we would do something like um, start it at 2100 hours so uh, nine o'clock at night and then what we would do is server nighttime acceleration would be one something like that server time persistent we would set to zero and then when we do our restarts we would make sure the server restarts every six hours so that way the server never gets the daytime before it restarts and every time it restarts it goes to night and you could do that something like that um, now when it comes to the date as well and uh, let's just change this back to nine o'clock in the morning when it comes to the date as well we'll be covering this in our cfg gameplay dot json video as well but the time of the year affects the temperature on your server so the reason why i cho chose june as my server date is because it's warmer um, and when we go into the uh, cfg gameplay.json file you'll see that the average temperatures in um, november december january february are much lower than they are in june july and august so if you want your players to have an easier time you can set your uh, server time to be the summer or if you want them to have a harder time set them to the winter now we can change those average temperatures and we will be changing them uh, in a future video but for now just just be aware of them that is, that is something that happens so the other thing we were going to talk about was changing the map wasn't it so as you can see if we go down to where it says class daisy we have template equals daisy offline dot generous plus and here he says vanilla mission and dlc mission very kindly put behind remarks when everything's behind a remark in a config file like these two forward slashes then it means it can't read that stuff so let's say you're actually well i want a livonia server now livonia is called enoch in the server so let's say you wanted your server to be livonia instead it's a simple case of just copying daisy offline enoch and then pasting it over the top of the existing one like so and then what we would then do is we would then save our server and restart it now what's very important to remember though is that when you do have a separate uh, when you do change your map it's not like any of the characters swap over to the other map um, or any of the progression or anything like that literally you'll be starting again on that map however what does happen is that when you swap back again let's say you ran with Chernus for a month and people were building bases and then you talk to your, your players or your, your mates and said actually should we go over and have it on Livonia for a month so they went and they went yeah but what about all our bases and our characters on Chernus you say don't worry when we come back again they'll still be there so you can swap over to daisy daisy offline enoch you know for a month play that and then when everybody wants to go back to Chernus you would copy that and you would paste that into there and then save uh, restart your server and you'd be back on Chernus where you left off with those other characters unless of course something serious has happened in the background where there's been a big update where there's been a force wipe or something like that but most of the time you'll, you'll find that um, that's probably a good time actually just to kind of show you what this what we kind of why that happens so if we go over to the file browser here and we scroll down your one will probably just say daisy standalone you can swap between different games on your nitrado server as well but if we go into daisy standalone which is the server and we click on here 
we have all these different um, folders or directories and then we have these entries down here and there we have MP missions so if we go into the missions folder we can see here we have the two separate maps so there's Chernerus and there's Enoch for Livonia and then if we go into our side Chernerus the folder that holds all the data for base building and where the loot is and where the characters are and where the players are with what stuff they on is in the storage folder so we can see there's a separate one for Chernerus and then if we go back to here and then go back into Enoch or Livonia what you should say is uh, if we go to the root directory uh, Actually, it's not there yet because we haven't run the server. But if the server restarted as a Livonia server, there would be um, that data uh, file there, folder there as well. So they're kept, kept separate. So that's why you can swap between the two and it will remember where you were. As long as you don't do a reinstall or something like that, it will remember where you were. So if you're thinking about swapping your server and trying out Livonia, by all means do. It also means that any files that you mod or things that you mod will be... Um, will be different so you're going to see we're going to go and change things like the types that xml and various mission files to change how your server players plays will be different but will what will remain the same is your expert settings because your server dz.config controls not only uh, your Cherner server but also Livonia server there isn't separate server dz.configs so if you wanted to have separate um, uh, ways that and speeds at which time passes on Chernus to Livonia, you'd have to edit your server dz.config as you went from one to the other. Okay, hopefully that's been clear. I remember when, when we're done with this, we just save changes, start the server, it'll restart, and those changes will then take effect. Right, remember, there's links to all of this stuff in the description below this video. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe, and I will, of course, see you again soon.